Good morning, my name is Jamie De La Fuente. I'm one of the second year uh, Mayo Gastroenterology Fellows, along with the rest of the Mayo Clinic Rochester team and my mentor, uh, Shonik Majumder. We're very happy to be presenting at this first ever virtual APA meeting. Uh, I will be discussing predictors of advanced neoplasia in surgically resected intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasms. IPMNs are pancreatic cystic lesions with malignant potential, though the majority of IPMNs have a low risk for malignancy. Accurately identifying IPMNs with advanced neoplasia remains clinically challenging. Advanced neoplasia encompassing both high-grade dysplasia and cancer. Identifying advanced neoplasia is important as these IPMNs are most likely to benefit from pancreatic surgery due to the current morbidity and mortality of the procedure. The aims of this presentation are twofold. One, to study the association of dysplasia grade with known clinical and imaging indicators for surgery in IPMNs, to identify novel clinical predictors of advanced neoplasia. In terms of methods, this is a retrospective single tertiary referral center cohort. This involves adults with surgically resected IPMNs for appropriate pathologic diagnosis. Preoperative abdominal imaging was required prior to resection of IPMN. And this retrospective cohort was collected between the years of 2000 and 2015. A multivariable model for predictors of advanced neoplasia was developed using known high risk and worrisome features that were est are established by the international consensus criteria of pancreatic cysts. Additional risk factors of pancreatic cancer are also um, evaluated using this model. Logistic regression used to estimate uh, odds ratios with 95% confidence intervals. In terms of results, a total of 453 subjects with IPMNs were surgically resected and met study inclusion criteria. As you can see here, this is the distribution of the dysplasia, uh, dysplasia grade in these resected IPMNs. Unsurprisingly, the majority of them have low grade dysplasia at 63%, followed by cancer and then high grade dysplasia. A multivariable model using high risk and worrisome features was developed. This model had a C statistic of about 0.84. The C statistic summarizes discriminatory ability of the model. So normally this range, the C statistic ranges from zero to one. Anything above a 0 0.70 generally provides clinically useful discrimination. So we evaluated high risk features we were able to demonstrate that jaundice, main pancreatic duct diameter of at least 10 millimeters and solid mass were statistically significant and associated with advanced neoplasia demonstrated in this column with the elevated odds ratios. A mural nodule of at least five millimeters in size was not found to be associated with advanced neoplasia, but this could be potentially explained due to the radiologist describing a solid mat, describing a mural nodule as a solid mass, preferentially in the radiologic reports. We also evaluated worrisome uh, features. We were able to demonstrate that main pancreatic duct diameter of five to nine millimeters and elevated CA199 were statistically significant and associated with advanced neoplasia demonstrated by the elevated odds ratios that can be seen here as well as here. Additional risk factors of pancreatic cancer not currently included in the international consensus CIS guidelines were also evaluated. These variables that were also evaluated can be seen here on the table on the right. Only a history of smoking was associated with advanced neoplasia with an odds ratio of about two. Of note, uh, significant weight loss defined as losing at least 10% of your body weight did approach statistical significance with a p-value of 0.07 and an odds ratio of about two. In conclusion, in our cohort established 
We, we established high-risk features in IPMNs were significant predictors of advanced neoplasia. Among worrisome features in IPMNs, elevated CA199 and main pancreatic duct dilation were found to be significant predictors. History of smoking was identified as an independent predictor of advanced neoplasia and surgically resected IPMNs. Therefore, a history of smoking may warrant careful attention during surveillance in patients managed non-operatively. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this presentation. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact me at the email provided on the screen. Thank you again.